Well, good morning from the Tin Man. It's uh, six o'clock in the morning here in WA, out on the farm. Um, don't know if you can see that. That's my nearest neighbour, way over there. Uh, great time to head on down to the workshop and build us a pulse motor. Okay, for those of you building your first pulse motor, we're going to do a step-by-step -step build here. Um, and we're going to do it relatively easy. This is an old washing machine motor. Um, you can also use ones out of an old clothes dryer. Most of them will be like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to rip this apart and we're going to use this as our base to building our pulse motor. It's going to give us our shaft bearings, two bearing carriers and of course the rotor in the middle, the windings, cap, all the electrical gear that was on this motor will be disregarded. There is a whole, <coughs> excuse me, a whole lot of copper wire in here that um, if you really wanted to take some time you could rescue but very very hard and difficult to do. Better off grabbing yourself an old monitor or TV and grabbing the wire out of that. So we'll strip this down, have a look what we've got and we'll be right back. Okay, this is what we've ended up with. We've got our two bearing carriers which we'll be using. Our rotor and our shaft. This actually had a fan each side which we won't need. So break that off, that was just a plastic fan. Very easy to break. Um, of course our two bearings. Now this has two retainer clips that go on the shaft, don't lose them. Our cap, keep that, that can come in handy won't it? And of course as you can see the wire is going to be extremely hard to get off of that so we're not even going to worry about it. So what we're going to do now, um, decide how many magnets you want to put on here and divide this up evenly to suit the amount of magnets that you want. Now I'm going to be using these here um, actually bought from the local hardware store they're a neodymium magnet with a hole in the middle and a steel pot on the outside they're used to screw to the wall and hang your tools on and they're very very strong as you can see so and very easy to fix to our rotor I'm just going to screw them straight on there I'm going to use four on this one so I'll go ahead and divide this up into four, hard, uh, four equal portions which of course will be 90 degrees in this case we'll drill some holes in here tap them for the screws and then we'll screw that on like so. So we'll go ahead and do that and we will be back. Okay so we've got our magnets mounted on our rotor. Now if you don't have um, access to drills, taps, dies, just glue your magnets on with some really good glue. Give the magnets a sand, give the rotor a sand and just glue them on there and hopefully they will stay on. So what we're going to do next is assemble the bearings back on the shaft. We're then going to work out what sort of spaces we need to get the space correct on our two carriers. A good idea is to flip the caps out of the bearings, give them a good wash out and put some really thin machine oil in there so they spin nice and free. Um, these bearings turned out to be the steel sealed ones, not the rubber ones. The steel caps do still flip out um, and they come out quite easy. So give your bearings a good wash and some nice thin machine oil in them just to cut the drops. And this will help um, relieve some friction on our rotor. So we'll go ahead assemble this back together and we will have a look at this 
and see what kind of spacing we need in between these two housings. Okay, so here's what's happened here. We've put all this together, I need to find that the shaft is slightly bent and it's got a tight spot in it. So, um, well, that would still work, but it's not going to be much good to us because we want this to spin nice and free. And it seems to spin pretty free, but it does have a tight spot because the shaft has somehow got bent. The belt used to go around here to the um, big drum and it was squashed when I picked it up so I would say that it's pulled on the shaft and bent it a little bit so although we could use that one we're not going to I'm going to switch over this one that I've made up now this is a little 600 watt vacuum cleaner motor and I've gone ahead and done the same thing and as you can see that one spins nice and free so yes, yeah, a big difference in size, but um, a lot better for um, what we're going to be doing here. Remember the rotors, we want to spin as free as we can get them to spin, otherwise we're going to require more amps to push them. So we're going to switch over to this one. Now what is good about this one, is it has some flat sides on it and the two halves went together without any spacings in them whatsoever and it's sitting there very nice so we've got a flat surface to mount our coil on and two and three and this side doesn't so that side will sit there we will start off with one coil just on the top and then a little later on, after we've got it up and running, we'll add two more coils. And then we can muck around with the circuit a bit, see what we can make it do. So I'm going to go ahead now and make up a plate and a coil to go on the top of this. And then we'll um, come back and work on the circuit. Okay, so we've now got our coil mounted and I've just stuck this on a bit of plastic um, just to give us a base to work off I've also stuck a heat sink here to screw the transistor we're going to be using onto normally not necessary, they don't get very hot but I will be doing something a little different with this later on and driving the transistors pretty hard this coil here um, is a little different you'll see there's a third winding up the top a very small one I'll be using that for something else a little later on um, when you're making a coil just get yourself a couple rolls of wire from your hobby shop um, you'll also end up with a good coil former and then of course we just fill it up with either ferrite and glue or in a lot of cases people just use bits of welding rod um, you can zip on over to our forum I'll put the link in the description and there is videos there um, showing you exactly how to make a coil but very simple two lots of wire somewhere around 0 0.5, 0 0.6 mil um, wrap them on together keep an eye on the start and your two ends as this will become important when it comes time to hooking up the circuit for the machine so we will go ahead now and make the circuit this one's going to start off just as the SSG circuit um, this one's by the DAF man, very simple, easy to follow so you can take a snapshot of that one or once again these are all on our forum under the circuits and diagram section so we'll go ahead now and we'll put the circuit together and we'll come back after we've done that okay so we've got all our circuit done um, don't forget your 
neon just to protect the transistor. The transistor I'm using in this or on this pulse motor is a TIP 142. Now that's a Darlington transistor. I'm just trying something a little different and it's made um, quite an improvement. Now, Darlington transistor of course is two transistors in one. One fires the other, bringing it on a whole lot harder. Um, these two wires here not being used just yet, but they will be. So we've got our two batteries, our run battery and our charge battery. This meter here just showing you the voltage of our charge battery, which is 12.28, and this meter here is just our amp draw from our run battery. Now, because we're using a Darlington transistor. Um, I will have to change over to a 5k pot because it's pulling the coil on very hard even with the pot being right down. So what we'll do now is we'll hook it up. Always hook the positive lead to the coil after you have everything else hooked up. Otherwise you may blow the transistor. So that's hooked up now. Um, as you can see it's not drawing any current and they don't until you start them. So you just give it a little spin like that and then you just slowly wind your putt up. And then until you get the least amount of current draw from your battery or the most amount going into your charge battery. As you can see our charge battery is already climbing, it is a 7 amp hour battery, it's going up quite quick and the reason because of this is the transistor I'm using, we are also pulling around 600 milliamps. The globe, like I said, the neon is to protect the transistor or help protect it if you should accidentally disconnect your charge battery while it's running. Um, in this case it's going to need two or three of these. I will disconnect it quickly just to show you how bright that goes but it's way too much. That is actually a 240 volt neon and it is still too much for the neon to handle. As you can see very very bright. And I won't take a lot to blow so it won't be giving your transistor much protection. It will need three or four of those on there. Um, that's a very good indication that the voltage spike coming back into our charge battery is very very high. So there you go, it's up and running. Um, I will be doing another one or two videos on this. Like I said, I'll be adding two more coils to this. And that's when these here will come into play. Uh, we're going to try something a little different and um, see how that goes. Normal transistors you would use, something like the 2N3055 is the most common, or the TIP 3055. Um, any NPN transistor that can handle a bit of current. This is running quite nice, has a fair bit of torque for what it is. Um, with the extra two coils on there we may be able to drive a generator off the shaft. So very simple, very easy setup. And um, these are easier to come by. Vacuum cleaners, washing machines, clothes dryers, any small AC motor, small to medium, we'll have a cage like that and a very simple and easy way to build a pulse motor. So I help, hope that's helped out any guys just getting into it, looking for an easy build. That's fairly easy. And as you can see, now up to 12, 38 volts. Um, it's charging very, very well. Okay. Now, for now, it's cheers from the tin man.
Well, I thought I'd just chuck a bit of a close-up of the um, motor running. You can see our rotor and magnets are spinning around there quite nicely. It's reasonably quiet. I'll just give you a bit of a close-up of the uh, neon. As you can see, it's a bigger than normal size neon lock and it is a um, 240 volt one so uh, we'll have a look at some fireworks in it that's what happens when you use a Darlington transistor it switches on very hard and switches off very hard and you get a much much better return on the run coil. I would hate to think how many volts are coming out of that. Close to 700 I would say. And our battery of course is charging up very quick. And that one over there is our amp draw from the run battery. 590 milliamps. But we're getting a very good charge as well. Thanks for watching.